right guys this is video four of the holiday rambler turned into a cargo trailer and here is welded on the center point it's got plenty of room around the tires don't worry we're currently putting down the plywood in here and the rest of this is already primed and ready to go so all the framework there has been repaired the epoxy is putting that piece of wood there where it was a little weak but we are finishing it up. There's lots of junk in it right now, but if it's all removed, this would actually look pretty nice. This is an old Rambler. I'm going to get a better shot there. Uh, gutted, doing some repairs in it. And right here was where the bathroom section of the trailer was. And you can see that it's got some pretty good damage. We went ahead and doubled up underneath. Uh, the steel is in good shape still. But what we're looking to do is we're looking to add outriggers. Now, I've beat this away with my hammer. That, that's actually still good wood. And we're going to show you how to add an outrigger to a trailer so that we don't have any more of these problems of wall shear, which is when the wall starts to sag down. Um, this is too much space at 34 inches for it to be a good job. So we want to make sure that we're able to roll rolling toolbox in here and with the three-quarter plywood and the half on top we're going to be really stout um, and the rest of this osb minus the little bit of vinyl that's still on it is in good shape so here's what i've got now what i'm going to show you here is a, a standard shelf bracket for like a grocery store now this one here's had two holes drilled in it because it was used to hang something but this is a shelf bracket and this is what they're typically going to look like is these things right here. They'll go into the slots that are made for hanging the shelf, and then there's just a few holes for screws to go up for the big boards or other metal shelves that go on it. So when you're in the grocery store and you're walking along the aisle, this is typically what would be holding up the shelves. Very strong, if you think about it. Um, they put these at four foot centers, so that'll hold a lot. Now, the good thing is, is that they are already an eighth inch thick. That is sufficient to add outrigger. Now, don't mind those little holes drilled in it. They're not going to make a difference. <clears throat> but by taking a board and putting it across the top of the other two, we get our frame given height, which is right here. And then all i got to do now is just sight it in and weld it. So it'll just be uh, multiple spot welds. And the way that it's going to, when, when it goes in here, we will be able to cut off the excess and then install it by putting it over here. And then you can see where the wall's at. Now, all this other stuff here is all being removed. This was where a water heater or a heating unit or something was sitting at, and they just, just chop them out. That's what they do. So we're going to now make this closer to 16 inch centers down the side of this than it had factory original and beefing it up a lot by doing this. So by putting these in, when I put my new plywood on, it's gonna have more strength in its span so that the half inch that goes over all of it will make a nice seamless transition between the two points and there won't be any flex in it. So we're gonna have one there, one there, and one up here in the front. Now this is still solid. So between those two outriggers where you see the marks, that'll stay so that it gives me something to work with. But we have an outrigger going there and there, and this is what they're made of. So let me get them in there. All right, now what we've done is we have tacked on the outrigger, and you can see there's just a few tacks. Now um, I'm going to be changing out to my better wire. Um, the cheap stuff, Lincoln or Hobart, works great for doing the uh, tacking, but. But I want to really weld on metal and don't want to burn through and do a good job. I use this stuff here, that INE. This is excellent, excellent stuff. Um, I'll put a link to where I get that at down there below the video. But the welding that this stuff does is impressive. And, and when you're dealing with old frames and things that have got a lot of crap on them, you know, just junk and rust and scale, about the best stuff on the market is that iron. So this stuff right here. Well, that's the reason we use it. So I'm going to swap out, and I'll be right back. This is my old Chicago Electric. This thing's been running for years, fault-free. So, 
All right, so now, as you can tell, those tacks were made with Hobart, which is a decent quality wire. It's not great, but price-wise, uh, cleanup and usage, and this, this stuff here requires multiple passes to get a good build. This here, I can just continue feed without really doing much damage or burn through, and I love this, this INE wire. Um, this welder here has been set up with improved rectifiers, and maybe I'll do a video one day on that, but it's, it's of course running a positive ground and negative on the, on the electrode there, on the gun. But we're gonna set up and get this done now. So the next thing is getting this framed out with a significant more outriggers so that we have more strength and less issues that caused all this to start with. Now we've got the outriggers. Went ahead and got them put on. There's the extra outriggers. So we are all in and we have the Holiday Rambler's frame, which is extremely solid, beefed up addition. Now, here's our board in here. And the board in here, this is like I've sold you in the previous video, this is just a glue, it's not damaged wood. It's the glue for this vinyl flooring that was down. But there we go with the full re replacement going underneath. Every one of these black lines you see here is an outrigger, a place to put screws down. There's the other piece. Metal for the flashing, already added for the fender wells on both sides over there. And we've already started with the plywood process. So you have your half inch plywood going over the top of your existing and your new all that over in that back corner all the way across and coming up about halfway is new down here now we're going to be doubling up two by twos in the walls here and adding additional girth of the wall by putting three quarters of an inch on the surface of the existing framing doing overlap where it comes in best to strengthen the framing up and then this whole piece here, going all the way across, as you can see, that's rotted out right there. That is uh, a little bit of both, a little bit of the staining, but over here, the glue is all that we got to worry about. That over there, you can see the black. See that right there? That's where the rot out is. All the way up to about two and a half inches away from up here. And you can see it was bad enough to where it pulled loose and sagged the wall. So. That's the nose of the trailer. So we're gonna start at this point right there, and we're going to put a, a 22 inch wide, eight foot long piece across here to those two sides and rebuild this corner in the process. That's our next step. We'll show you that as we wind this one down for doing the floor repairs on this. Now all we did in this, this one's case is use wooden shims underneath the edge of the wall push the wall out and let it hang with a board screwed to it down to the floor in a couple of places and then use wood shims and then tap the wall back and then pop the shims back out. Go prying up on them with a pry bar. And that put the wall back in place. Now our next step is shooting the screws down. The screws we're using are the ones that Kira has right here that are the self-tapping, Phillips drive, and they have a slight tapered head and they go into that metal and hold extremely well. These are inch and three eighths. And what we're using is a starter bit where we will drill a hole that is two thirds of the diameter. Might look the same, but it's two thirds. And that allows the starter bit to get a good bite. There you go. Allows the starter bit to get a good bite and sink and pull itself down into the wood a little bit, making it a very tight fit. So there you go. All right, guys, now the repair wood is down. And then over here where Emma's at is a new piece we haven't put down yet. So we have two pound hammer tested everything else. If it thumped good, it stayed. So we even drilled holes to make sure that we didn't have early breakthrough 
um, underneath. So there's holes, a few holes over here. And you can see the coloration there. That's where they had their adhesives, and that's why it's different. Um, out here on the outer edge is where they had the heaviest amount because the way they build these trailers is they actually lay the vinyl down before they ever put the walls down. So you'll have vinyl underneath the walls down in here. The rest of it up here is coming out. All right, hey guys, we have opened it up and the inside of the trailer is now exposed. This shows you the framework that we're dealing with up here in the front. Pretty substantial, it's a Holiday Rambler frame after all. And this is how they're built. So when you see a Holiday Rambler, you wonder why I left a lot of this material. It, it, it's pretty well built, just didn't have very good owners. So we've got the piece cut that goes in here, goes all the way across, an eight foot piece of plywood, and catches on the outrigger over there, up on the frame, and we're going to add additional outriggers right there and over here on this corner. That ought to give it a, the ability to stay very stout. So we're gonna get that piece in, and you guys look for the next video when the flooring in here has been finished all the way back from the tail of it around the fender wells. That fender well will be in construction, and you'll be able to see the whole thing with extra stud work in it. And we've got this kind of repair to do up here, and here's a good thing here. We have now widened the door, and it's going to have this door in it that is sitting out here. That is a door I had in storage for 10 years. Key set, deadbolt, and all that stuff. So we're gonna have that in there, that door right there. It's a Pacific, very stout door, very solid, foam core. So here we go. Y'all come back, y'all watch the next video that's gonna show you the completion. And you can see, anybody can do this. You see that gap there? It's supported on the outside by a few shims. And the rest of it is the structure itself. You can do this. All right, guys.